I'm going to start you out by addressing a question, a rhetorical question. No answers, please. I'm not, I'm not asking this for answers. I'm going somewhere. Is anyone thankful for me? You don't have to answer. I didn't want you to answer it. I don't want you to, I'm, not, I'm not trying to lead to some kind of applause here or uh, Jack. Jack was about to bow down for him before me. I don't know what he was doing over there. Maybe he was falling asleep. No, I just asked that question, and I'm going to turn it around in a minute. Is anyone thankful for me? And, I, and I'll say, I don't have to ask that question in regards to my church. We just came through Past Appreciation Month. But that month aside, you always show me appreciation. I know you're thankful because you say so. And I appreciate that. I appreciate being appreciated. But the truth is, how many times do we ask that questions? That question of ourselves. Is anyone thankful for me? Maybe you're a parent. And you do and do and do for your kids. And you make the statement, they don't even appreciate me for who I am. Oh, come on, everybody. Every parent's mentioned that. You thought it at least. They don't even, they're not even thankful for all the hard work I'd put in to make, to provide for them. Maybe you've got a family member that you provide care for and you're like, I don't even know if they're thankful for all I do for them. I know how to get your attention. Maybe you've got a boss you work for. Huh. They don't even appreciate. I didn't even get a Christmas bonus. They don't appreciate me. I don't even know if they're thankful for me. Maybe you've got friends, family. Maybe you serve here in the church and you're like, I don't even know. I hope you don't feel this way. We, we, I think we're pretty good at showing thankfulness. But maybe, maybe you think... I just, you know what, I'm not even going to serve anymore because they're just not thankful for me. Maybe, maybe they'll realize what they had when they miss me. Is anyone thankful for me? The answer is yes. And it's a, it's a fine question to ask, I think, at times. But in the church, it should always be Yes. And amen. There should always be appreciation and thankfulness shown for those who serve the Lord and his church. And I hope you agree with that. Paul certainly understood that. And he writes this in Colossians chapter 1 as he offers this letter to the church in Colossae. And here's how Paul starts this letter in Colossians. He says, Paul... An apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae. So he's writing to the church here. We know this. The faithful, he gives them a compliment. The faithful, and if I was writing it, I'd say, and good looking brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. A nice greeting there. And then he says in verse 3, We always, not sometimes, not on occasion, not when you do something worthy of it. We always thank God. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, or Epaphras, however you want to read it, our dear fellow servant, 
who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. May God add his blessing to his word today. Paul writes this letter and he gives thanks not just to the people. He doesn't just show them appreciation. But the scripture there in verse 3 tells us he gives thanks to God for the people. And that's something maybe we don't do enough of. I'll just camp right there for a second. I, I often tell people that I'm thankful for them, that I appreciate them. I often try to do that. But it is just as, of, as much of an importance, if not more, for me to, in, this, in the same turn, thank God for those who serve and those who are the church, his church. That's important. I'm thankful for you today. I'm thankful you're here today. But I thank God for you today. And I thank God that you're able to be here today. I give him thanks this morning. Paul expresses his thanksgiving and then he goes on in some detail to explain why he is thankful for the people. We just read over it. You can go back and check it. He, he talks about their hope, their faith, their love for the church and one another. He gives reasons as to why he's thankful for them. And so I'll, I'll ask a question again. Is anyone thankful for you and for me and what we do for God's church? Hmm. Not just thankful for us, but if Paul was writing Gordon Lake a letter, Paul, the leader of the first century church. Would he have reason to give gratitude? I think so. I'm just asking you. I certainly think so. Lots of gratitude. Paul wrote in our text today that he was thankful for the Christians in the church because of the qualities that they possessed. Paul was often seeking something good to say about those who served in the Lord and we see that in all of his letters every letter Paul writes he offers thanksgiving for those who serve the Lord you see appreciation is something we all appreciate I don't care who you are appreciation is something we all appreciate we love to be loved and we like to be liked Amen? That's okay. I want people to love me. I want people to like me. I want people to appreciate what I do in service to them and to others. But the greater question might be, do you show people the appreciation that they deserve? Are you a thankful person? Are you a thankful person? I feel like sometimes when we go into, and I know this is kind of a soft, a tender spot in our culture today, but uh, everybody wants a tip. You go somewhere, I mean, you can go through the drive through now and they'll ask you, do you want to leave a tip? Because sometimes being thankful is just not enough anymore. But we've certainly got to do our part to be thankful. Not just this season, but every season. There's a guy that gives us a good example of what a thankful person looks like. And I want you to watch this short video. Mm. This cereal is delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning folks, the 8.15 has been delayed. The 8.15 has been cancelled, replaced bus services are available. Thank you guys. Thank you.
Amazing. Great driving. I am thankful today. And I think we can take some lessons from Mr. Thankful, but not be weird like Mr. Thankful. When I think about someone who's thankful, a dog comes to mind. And I don't even have a dog. I've had dogs, but no one loves you and appreciates you more than your dog. They call it man's best friend for a reason. Because men like to be appreciated. And they like attention. Right, women? Nobody? Okay. I gave you a fair chance right there. Dogs really love attention. They are thankful. They will wag their tail when they see you. They get excited when you give them food. When you take them outside, they're really pumped up about it. A dog is thankful. I heard a story one time. And it went like this. He said, if you want to find out who's really thankful for you, you take your dog and you go lock your dog in the trunk of a car. And then you take your wife and you go lock her in the trunk of another car. You wait an hour and then you go open both trunks and see which one licks you when you open the trunk. You'll find out really quickly Who's thankful for you? The sad reality is we're not always thankful, but we're sometimes critical. Sometimes we are critical when we should choose to be thankful. But I will say there's room for criticism. There's always room for positive criticism. We have faults and we have issues that are sometimes detected and can easily be pointed out. And sometimes in God's house even, people are quick to point out issues that they see with others. Maybe it's an issue in your family. Maybe it's an issue that you point out in your workplace. Even when you read the letters that Paul writes to the churches, number one, he's thankful for them. Number two, he thanks God for them. But if you read all the letters that Paul wrote to the churches, he's also critical of them. And that's okay. Sometimes criticism is allowed, but we cannot let criticism outweigh our compliments. Paul always put together a list of compliments, a set of compliments, thanking God for all the attributes and positive things that the church was doing and serving the Lord. In essence, Paul was was doing, was thanking God and it became this habit of his which is real becoming of God's people but sometimes we hear complaints in the church but I don't want our complaints to outweigh the compliments it's almost like I've said before being that optimistic person versus that pessimistic person It's easy to get out there in the world in our day-to-day and someone bring up the the, the, uh, country's economy, for instance, and for us to get real critical about how life is. And yet we live a better life than most in the world. It's real easy for us as the church when we're out in in the world to hear someone be critical about something about someone's behavior, about how the world is going, about how things are handled from the top down. And we get so caught up in that jargon that we miss an opportunity to show thanksgiving and to have a positive attitude and to be appreciative for the life that God has given us. Am I happy for the way things go in my life every day? No. Am I thankful for it? Yes. Yes. Thank God I've got a tire to get a nail in. Thank God I've got a washing machine that needs fixing. 
Thank God I've got clothes that I have to go launder and wash today. Thank God that I have floors that need swept. We don't always go that way. We're not always Mr. Thankful in our lives. But God has been so good to us. I have to ask myself that question sometimes. Is anyone thankful for me? But many times I have to flip the script on it and ask, do I deserve the gratitude from the people? Am I even deserving? Do we need to be thankful for one another? Yes, we do. But at the same time, we need to ask ourselves the question, do I even deserve the gratitude that I long for, that I'm hoping for? I asked the question, I posed it just a few minutes ago. If Paul were writing us a letter at Gordon Lake, what would it say? If he thanked us, what would be the qualities that he would describe that rec represent the Lord that he would be proud of us for? You know, I don't answer that. I'm just, think about it. What is God proud of you for today? What is it that you do in life that you go to bed at night and you think, Lord, I hope I made you proud today. I hope you ma I made you proud. I'm 45 years old and I still want to make my parents proud. I want my parents, my father, my mother to be proud of the person that I am. I want them to be proud. I want the same for my heavenly father. I want to know that I'm living a life that makes him proud proud of me I'm not asking for his appreciation I don't deserve it but if I ask myself what would God be proud of me about what is he going to say to me on that judgment day when I stand before him it sure makes me rethink how I live my life every day and the type of attitude that I have I want us to be faithful workers filled with love and hope and do it for him until he comes. I want you to look for opportunities to encourage one another. Listen, I kept you late last week. I'm getting you out of here early today, so you need to appreciate me. <laughs> I want you to find ways to show gratitude to others. Be very intentional about it. Very intentional. Not just this week. Make it a lifestyle. Boy, I tell you, when you make it a part of your life, it's so fulfilling. Not for attention. It just makes you feel good that you can love on others. That you can do good for others. Whatever that looks like. Whatever that looks like. Find ways to show gratitude. And then number two, make sure that you're deserving of gratitude. Whether you get it or not, make sure you're deserving of it. Are you serving in the church? And is your service in the church worth gratitude? Should your family be thankful for you? Are you giving your boss a reason to be thankful for you? Or are you just doing the minimum to get by? Are you doing what it takes to deserve gratitude? I hope you'll think through those two things this week. That you'll show gratitude and that you'll be deserving of it. Through the way you serve others. I'm going to just let you sit right where you are today. The text goes on here, and I, I kind of just want this to be a, a closing prayer for you today and for us this morning. Paul writes this and starts this letter to the people of Colossae. He greets them. He blesses them with grace and peace. He acknowledges their service. He talks about their hope, their faithfulness, their love for others. Such a beautiful thing. If Paul were writing us a letter at Gordon Lake, I think he would write the same thing. I 
feel like this letter's for us today. I really do. And so I'm going to close with this prayer that Paul offers to them. And here's what he says. If you don't mind, just close your eyes right where you are. And let me speak this over you today. He says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. And here's the prayer. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work growing in the knowledge of God being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you, Gordon Lake, to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins and we ask these things over these people in Jesus name and the church said Amen